Okay, so today we have um, our guest, Lindsay, on the Growth, Grace, and Gratitude podcast, and she is a certified addiction counselor. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. And I love your work. I was going through your posts um, just a few days ago, actually, and I even was writing a few poems for my clients because they like they're going through different kinds of healing cycles, and I thought it's such an alignment to talk about the addiction recovery process. So what exactly do you do? Okay. I, (laughs) so I, um, I work for a treatment center, which I don't advertise online or anything because it's kind of separate for me, but, um, I work for a treatment center and I meet with my clients once a week. Um, and I keep a full caseload and I help them from the time they come in um, to the year, the program is a year long. So it's pretty cool to get to see the growth in that time span. It's great actually. Um, so yeah, that's one thing I do. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, on besides that, that's my, just my work, um, you know, to have money coming in, but I am, uh, doing my own kind of podcast thing and trying to get involved online to help others that can't afford to go to treatment or just need support. And it helps me more than them, (laughs) in my opinion. But um, yeah, that's it helps me in my own recovery. I love that. That's so amazing. And that that's so true. Like I, when I started to go through different kinds of healing cycles, and I started I was kind of like even guided I don't know if through like the spiritual sense mm-hmm. to to have um, to begin doing sessions for people like mental health life coach yeah. sessions. You're so right. It really did help me as well. It's that's when you know like you're doing a really good like soul healing and mm-hmm. you're aligned with your soul because like when you're helping others and you're helping yourself, this is like the best authentic feeling. Mm-hmm. It totally is. It's it's like totally in alignment and congruent for me. It just it's my best self. I love it. Yeah. And it's, it's such an interesting topic about um, addiction because I feel like so many of us are addicted to something like, even if it's, it could be minor on the surface. Like Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my friends have went through emotional overeating, especially Mm -hmm. as I grew up in the dance world and a lot of competitive dancing, competitive ice skating, this kind of like extreme um, polarization Mm-hmm. And it's it's so like hard to to focus on mastering this kind of like physical skill and also respecting your body. Right, right. Yeah, I've, I've had friends that have grown up ice skating and said similar things to that for sure. Yeah. So what what would you suggest like as a good way to cope for people that are that have this like demanding kind of work? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. So for as long as, as far as addiction in as a whole, um, I would say that staying, um, well, balance, obviously, but, you know, staying in alignment spiritually, however that looks for you, that is one thing that has never failed me. um, And I know that I'm balanced in my recovery, whether that be eating or, um, emotional, um, you know, relationships, drugs, alcohol, all that stuff, just because I put down the drugs and alcohol, um, I still have all of these other things that I need to work on these areas, um, work on balance in them. So I think like staying aligned, staying connected with others and myself and my higher power, uh, seems to be the sweet spot. Um, I love that. Yeah, I love that. That's such a good point. And it's yeah. also like really cool that you mentioned you don't focus on just one part. This is like an overarching theme of mm-hmm. look at every part of your life and where you feel like you might maybe not be respecting yourself fully. Exactly. Yes. And I think um, a, a big thing that people believe is that it is about the substance and, and that's because that's how it's kind of talked about, right? Like alcoholic drug addict, or, you know, um, they say the eating disorders and they kind of, it's kind of derogatory in a way, but 
for me and many like me that have struggled with some kind of addiction, it wasn't the substance. It wasn't the actual behavior. It wasn't the, um, it wasn't exactly that, that I was seeking. It was relief. It was an escape. It was whatever filling that void may look like for me or trying to feel like I belong. So all sorts of things like that to where I'm in need of something, some need of needs fulfilling. And I would reach out externally for that to be filled and, and fill that, that proverbial void in myself. And so I, I know a lot of people are like that too. I know um, there are, you know, with eating disorders, I know that's a little bit different. Um, but I have had friends that one of my good friends actually talks about it being almost like exactly the same feelings that I've had. It's wild how similar. Wow. You know? Yeah, it's it's wild. So so the treatment is all basically um, can at least start from one central point, in my opinion, of, you know, really looking at the person like as a whole and and what parts are you know really lacking and build our life up like that and it's difficult it's there's nothing wrong with us either you know i think a, a lot of people in the media or just culture in general and society speak about that kind of stuff like an addiction as such a such a horrible thing to have and, and morally bankrupt. And it has nothing to do with any of that, you know? And I think that educating others, educating each other and supporting each other through that is the best way to get through that and help others with their addiction, whatever it may be, you know? Wow. Yeah. That is so beautifully said. And it's true. There's so much Thanks. kind of ex extreme like judgments on this mm -hmm. and you're describing such a, holistic way to look at a person and the core of the inner child that just wants to find like a touch of clarity and acceptance in yes. the present anxious moment it's so like that's all the inner child wants is to, mm -hmm. to find that psychological it can almost be like psychological like a peace of mind and that's yes. why it's, it's so difficult to like when when people do feel depressed or helpless or feeling out of control, this is where the mind just desperately wants to kind of cling on to something. And like for me, like I personally didn't have any extreme addiction, but mm -hmm. I did have like a people pleasing personality. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. like empaths go through this. So it's like, yeah, I would maybe have friends that are like, um, obsessed with like the consumerism lifestyle like mm -hmm. maximalism and maybe they were a little bit more selfish mm -hmm. and they they also made me feel like I was kind of left out because I was unable to to feel seen in my authentic way because they were like focused on external validation oh and, yeah like that was not me at all that's exactly what it is though is that external validation you hit you hit the nail right in the head that's what I believe that I am seeking. I'm I'm reaching externally for something that is internally found, right? And that's that's the spiritual component, the spiritual solution, I believe, to um, you know, whatever the addiction may be. So I think you explained that really well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's totally true. And I, I even like I, I wrote down what you said, your recent post that you said. It's okay to release it's okay to release myself from my past identities. In fact, I must. Let's create who we want to be. Mm. I love this. Oh, thank you. This I, is like such a good way of like taking accountability. Yeah, I think I'm really on this sort of spiritual journey with identity and learning the different parts of myself because that's how I change for good. Right. And, and long lasting change is change my identity because the old Lindsay was not the same as I am now. Right. My identity was of an alcoholic, yes. you know, all sorts of different labels and identities that I associated myself with a failure, a loser. And, um, 
I think it really has to be, has to come down to, you know, what is my new identity? I have the power to create my life, myself, my new identity and, and change my life. And I think it's beautiful and it can be really an amazing thing that doesn't have to be, um, I'm going to, you know, we're going to stop your addiction, stop drinking, stop this, stop that. And I, I don't think that that's very productive. I think that it's not about that. It's about creating a whole person. If that, I hope that makes sense. Oh yes, that makes like perfect sense. It's such a like a delicate rewiring process. Mm. Um, it's like of the mind, body, and soul. It's, it's that. Yes. Specific. <laughs> and I think. Oh like, yes. Yeah, I think like when you said about identities, this is such a big like theme in because I do some like ancestral healing with mm-hmm. the inner child and. Our identities are formed almost like even before conception. It's such an ancestral, like like, oh. a, time, like, like a time loop of trauma, even sometimes. Right, because isn't it, it? It's intergenerational. Exactly. Yeah. Part, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and so do you. You work with inner child stuff, and that that is so fascinating to me. And I think that is a huge part of um, healing in general, obviously, but part of addiction treatment. It 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 really, really is important, I think. Um, and I, it took me a long time to realize that, uh, because you don't learn that stuff like in treatment usually, or maybe if you do, it's a very small percentage and they don't teach that in 12 step fellowships, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? So I think that's just a, a, any, for anybody though, right? Not even just the addiction, but I think that's important. I really do. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's so true. What about trauma? Did you, do you, um, do you focus on that at all? I think that with trauma, I never realized that any wounds that are left unhealed, you know, they, they can really impair someone's ability to move on from their addiction, whatever that may may be. Have you come across that? Yeah. Yeah. That that's very true because like, um, I was going through a client who had an addiction to, um, it's like retail therapy, but it's, what is that word? Like, like, um, shopaholic. Yeah. Yeah. Like the shopaholic and underneath there was a, like a subconscious fear about finance and managing money and having responsibility mm. of money. So it's like those layers are, we had to slowly peel off those layers because at first they just thought, okay, so what? Like I'm obsessed with shopping. It's fine. It's, it's like my, mm-hmm. it's my fun. It's like I have a, an opportunity of once a week, but it wasn't actually once a week, but it started out once a week. But then, you know, there started to be um, like a lacking accountability. So we had to work through taking accountability and like taking off all, all those layers to be aware of. And that even came from childhood feeling that they grew up in a lack mentality household where maybe money was tight yeah. and they never got that. Again, it's like the validation, the mm-hmm. financial validation to be accepted. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely. It really is. Yeah. And then also um, a different client was going through different kinds of like um, drug, drug addiction. Mm-hmm. And at, at the, at the deep psychological level, when when they were getting um, guidance from, they were going to like um, a professional therapist and they wanted additional guidance from me, like life coaching guidance, because mm-hmm. I, I do offer that additional like spiritual component. So I gave them the opportunity if they wanted to, to listen to like specific music. And that actually helped a lot because, you know, music can stimulate new different kinds of like neurological Mm -hmm. things in the brain and it also keeps the cognitive abilities fine-tuned so it's like this really was able to help to calm the brain down and to like long term it was it it wasn't that like a quick fix but right over time it really did help with I guess relaxation and when when the brain is relaxed like different choices can be made like especially if you have like opera classical instrumental music different hertz it really affects the mind i think positively yeah it's very powerful that is such a great healing tool i'm glad you said that um 
that's that's very powerful. I love it. Yeah. What I really try to do with my clients too is get down to the root cause, kind of like what you were just talking about and saying there there's usually some kind of wound there or some kind of pain, there's something and and it manifests into different addictions, different behaviors, different coping mechanisms that maybe aren't very um, productive, you know, and I think that that's true for many of us. But I used to think that just people like myself that maybe had a prior drug addiction of any type or alcohol addiction that we were in a separate category and there's something wrong with us. And so I don't believe that, but that was kind of what I was conditioned to believe in early sobriety being around certain people, you know, and kind of like, well, you, you aren't able to do that because you're an alcoholic. And that means that you, you will never be able to drink or use again because you're basically defective, right? Like there's something wrong with you. And, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a lot to unpack. And I think even myself, um, I'm working with a couple different therapists, um, for a while now to where they're helping me unravel the conditioning I had, which is even in my own recovery from external sources, if that makes sense. Um, you know, different programs and stuff that I was in that, um, you repeat something enough times and you're totally immersed in it and it does become truth to us, you know? And I think really kind of getting down to the core of that and, and deciding or deciphering what, what was helpful for being sober and living a life of contentment versus, you know, how I was, I was taught to be kind of fearful of the outside world, um, of people that weren't in recovery, you know? And so, and I know this is a very common thing actually, and I don't think people really talk about it. Um, so I've been trying to really express that on my podcast and, um, I've had a couple of friends that are in recovery trying to do the same thing and just really say like, it is a holistic type of solution. In my opinion, it, it, it has to be, it's not just, you can't just take away the addiction and not fill it with anything else productive or new coping skills and mechanisms, you know? So really that's kind of been my trajectory lately with, with my kind of healing and, and what I've been doing with my clients. And I mean, I really love it. I love being able to have a group of people that help me to grow and want to grow and, and we can, you know, do this together because we, you know, we have a camaraderie there. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Wow. That that's beautiful. And it's also like that's so um that you became so aware of that that's also like a testimony to oh, you, you and your your empowerment that's amazing thank you yeah i think thank that, you for sharing that thanks yeah i think that that's really important and um kind of the self empowerment and autonomy self efficacy that you know coming out from kind of feeling like a little girl a wounded little girl in early recovery to now sort of growing into myself and not being fearful and, and learning how to not be fearful and how to really just navigate life one step at a time. Right. I think it's, yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. It's so, it's really cool. I, I really appreciate you having me on here. I, I love to talk about recovery and just healing in general. And, you know, I, I do this, um, uh, podcasting and just being so active virtually and on the social media because it makes me feel whole in my recovery. It makes me feel like if I'm not giving back, um, I'm not on point. I'm not connected, you know? So I think that's important for me and my happiness actually, <laughs> you know? Wow. That, that's amazing. <laughs> Down to I, feel, I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So where can people find you and connect with you? 
Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm on X. Um, my handle is at um, L underscore Valandry, which is V as in Victor, I-L-L-A-N-D-R-Y. That's my last name. And uh, my YouTube name is Recover From Addiction, one word. So if you, that's my my username on there. It's Lindsay okay, Valandry. Perfect. Yeah, Lindsay Valandry Addiction Counselor. But that's how you find it is by at Recover From Addiction. Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. I'll include that all in the description as well. Thank you. Yeah, and um, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on here and just. I love talking about this with others, so I really appreciate it. Was my pl- it. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was so much fun. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and have a wonderful rest of your week and week. And, and awesome. Week. <laughs> <laughs> you too, hon. Bye-bye. Bye.